Hi, thank you for joining me. Linda Lamp here. We've been reading A Course in Miracles, the main text. And we've been reading chapter 21, Reason and Perception. And today we'll read section seven of that chapter, Reason versus Madness. And uh, before I start, I just wanna say, I apologize, I'm not on camera. Um, I do something prior to this reading on camera and I do another reading afterwards on camera. And I just don't have time to prep to have this one be on camera as well. So I apologize. Let me just get my picture. The other thing I'll stay before I start this uh, chapter here or section is uh, uh, to just preface it with uh, reminding you that this is difficult text it is not clear or simple to understand it. Uh, this particular first chapter that, or first paragraph I'm about to read is very convoluted. So uh, just be patient with yourself. And, and remember, this is channeled work. It came through someone else. So it's got that uh, overhead that we have to process as well. Um, and uh, let's see how this goes today. Reason versus madness. Reason cannot see sin, but can see errors and leads to their correction. It does not value them, but their correction. Reason will also tell you that when you think you sin, you call for help. Yet if you will not accept the help you call for, you will not believe that it is yours to give. And so you will not give it, thus maintaining the belief. For uncorrected error of any kind deceives you about the power that is in you to make correction. If it can correct and you allow it not to do so, you deny it to yourself and to your brother. And if he shares this same belief, you both will think that you are damned. This you could spare him and yourself for reason would not make way for correction in you alone. Correction cannot be accepted or refuted by you without your brother. Sin would maintain it can. Yet reason tells you that you cannot see your brother or yourself as sinful and still perceive the other innocent. Who looks upon himself as guilty and sees a sinless world? And who can see a sinful world and look upon himself apart from it? Sin would maintain you must be separate. But reason tells you this must be wrong. If you are joined, how could it be that you have private thoughts? And how could thoughts that enter in, that enter into what but seems like yours alone have no effect at all on what is yours. If minds are joined, this is impossible. No one can think but for himself, as God thinks, not only with, not without his son. Only were both in bodies could this be. Nor could one mind only ask, hang on, nor could one mind only for itself sorry, I missed a word, nor could one mind think only for itself unless the body were mind. For only bodies can be separate and therefore unreal. The home of madness cannot be the home of reason. Yet it is easy to leave the home of madness if you see reason. You do not leave insanity by going somewhere else. You leave it simply by accepting reason where madness was. Madness and reason see the same things, but it is certain that they look upon them differently. Madness is an attack on reason that drives it out of the mind and takes its place. Reason does not attack, but it takes the place of madness quietly, replacing madness if it be the choice of the insane to listen to it. But the insane will not know their will, for they believe they see the body 
and let their madness tell them it is real. Reason would be incapable of this. And if you would defend the body against your reason, you will not understand the body or yourself. The body does not separate you from your brother. And if you think it does, you are insane. But madness has a purpose and believes it also has the means to make the purpose real. To see the body as a barrier between what reason tells you must be joined, must be insane. Nor could you see it if you heard the voice of reason. What can there be that stands between what is continuous? And if there is nothing in between, how can what enters be enters part be kept away from other parts? Let me try that sentence again. And if there is nothing in between, how can what enters part be kept away from other parts? Reason would tell you this, but think what you must recognize if it be so. If you choose sin instead of healing, you would condemn the sum of God to what can never be corrected. You tell him by your choice that he is damned, separate from you and from his father forever, without a hope of safe return. You teach him this and you will learn of him exactly what you taught. For you can teach him only that he is as you would have him, and what you choose he be is but your choice for you. Yet think not this is fearful, that you are joined to him is but a fact, not an interpretation. How can a fact be fearful unless it de disagrees with what you hold more dear than truth? Reason will tell you that this fact is your release. Neither your brother nor yourself can be attacked alone, but neither can accept a miracle instead without the other being blessed by it and healed of pain. Reason, like love, would reassure you and seeks not to frighten you. The power to heal the Son of God is given you because he must be one with you. You are responsible for how he sees himself. And reason tells you sorry. And reason tells you, it is given you to change his whole mind, which is one with you in just an instant. And any instant serves to bring complete correction of his errors and make him whole. The instant you choose to let yourself be healed in that same instant is his whole salvation seen as complete with yours. Reason is given you to understand that this is so. For reason, kind as is the goal, for reason, kind as is the purpose for which it is the means, leads steadily away from madness toward the goal of truth. And here you will lay down the burden of denying truth. This is the burden that is terrible and not the truth. That you are joined is your salvation, the gift of heaven, not the gift of fear. Does heaven seem to be a burden to you? In madness, yes. And yet what madness sees must be dispelled by reason. Reason assures you heaven is what you want and all you want. Listen to him who speaks with reason and brings your reason into line with his. Be willing to let reason be the means by which he would direct you how to leave insanity behind. Hide not behind insanity in order to escape from reason. What madness would conceal, the Holy Spirit still holds out for everyone to look upon with gladness.
You are your brother's savior. He is yours. Reason speaks happily indeed of this. Hang on a second. I need to clear my throat. Okay. This gracious plan was given love by love. And what love plans is like itself in this. Being united, it would have you learn what you must be. And being one with it, it must be given to you to give what it has given and give still. Spend but an instant in the glad acceptance of what is given you to give your brother and learn with him what has been given both of you. To give no more, bless. To give is no more blessed than to receive, but neither is it less. The Son of God is always blessed as one, and as his gratitude goes out to you who blessed him, reason will tell you that it cannot be you, that it cannot be you stand apart from blessing. The gratitude he offers you reminds you of the thanks your father gives you for completing him. And here alone does reason tell you that you can understand what you must be. Your father is as close to you as is your brother. Yet what is there that could be nearer to you than yourself? The power you have over the Son of God is not a threat to his reality, but it, it but attests to it. Where could his freedom lie but in himself, if he be free already? And who could bind him but himself if he deny his freedom? God is not mocked. No more his son can be imprisoned, saved by his own desire. And it is by his own desire that he is freed. Such is his strength and not his weakness. He is at his own mercy. And here he chooses to be merciful. There he is free. But where he chooses to condemn instead, there is he held a prisoner, waiting in chains, his pardon on himself to set him free. So that is the end of section seven, reason versus madness. And let me just take a moment here and see if I can find, there were a couple of places I wanted to speak to. So this paragraph here that starts, no one can think but for himself as God thinks not without his son. Only were both in bodies could this be, nor could one mind think only for itself unless the body were the mind for only bodies can be separate and therefore unreal. So let's talk about this for a minute. It's very convoluted and not clear. But what is clear, what we, what we know is clear, is that this physical world is an illusion. And so when it says only bodies can be separate and therefore unreal, this is what it's referring to, I believe, is the fact that ultimately all, everything around us is unreal because as we know from other teachings, quantum physics tells us everything is an illusion here. Nothing is really as it looks or appears. And so our bodies are also a part of that illusion in this physical realm. That's what I believe it is talking about here. And, um, and, and ultimately what we also know to be true is that we are all one. 
the consciousness of divinity permeates everything. And, and so this, these, this teaching, the Course in Miracles teaching is a difficult one to, to absorb because of its archaic language. But later on, it says the body is not separate from the body does not separate you from your brother. And if you think it does, you are insane. This is what it's talking about. Just because you are separate in physicality, you are not separate from your brother. We are all one. Divinity is in everything. If you choose to, if you choose sin instead of healing, you would choose, you would condemn the Son of God to what can never be corrected. Um, of course, you know I don't care for that kind of language because uh, this notion of uh, can never be corrected. There is no such thing as time, and so in the instant, things can instantly be corrected and forgiven. Um, but the Course in Miracles doesn't really, it doesn't work time into its teaching so much. You are your brother's savior and he is yours. And that is because we are one. We are one. And it is through that embracing of that oneness that we save each other. So I think that does it for me with this uh, section today. If you have additional questions or uh, comments, would like additional support with this, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me at 907-351-3003. Uh, texting is best, but you can also call and leave a voicemail. Um, and I say leave a voicemail because I don't necessarily carry this phone with me all the time. I run several other businesses and I have a lot going on. So there's a few devices that don't get packed around all the time. And this is one of them. You can also uh, comment either where you find this on, on Facebook or on YouTube or on SoundCloud and I will respond there as well. So thank you again. I hope you'll join me uh, next Sunday for the, uh, the next section of this chapter. And until then, much love. Namaste.